MJ with three mask aligner uh, with uh, a standard chuck uh, can handle up to three inch wafers and this is the the, the table which where we load the sample holder chuck and load the wafer. The mask is to be mounted on this mask holder plate with the patterns on the bottom side. And once uh, placed properly and the vacuum mask will hold the mask in its place, then slide it in and lock these two knobs so that the mask won't move or the mask holder is firmly secured. After that, make sure the the lever is in down position, which is the front position. Now this is the contact lever. Once you load the sample and slide in the table into position, rotate the lever counterclockwise to go to contact position. And this lever is a separation lever. By sliding it to the front, there is a gap between the substrate and the mask, which is represented by the separation light. The, once the lever is moved, pushed to the forward, the contact light turns on. In order to proceed with the alignment, the separation should be on. And watch this. I am able to move the slightly scratched substrate over there. Now this is y-axis moment, the x-axis moment, and the theta. Now, once the alignment is over, press the expose button. The power comes forward, and the shutter opens, and the sample is now exposed. For the time duration set by this timer here. There is a UV filter for 365 nanometers. This is a final lens, also a filter, which slide in at the bottom of the hood, it slides in. And I'm using a USH 350DS Ushio lamp. Uh, even HBO lamps are available. Uh, this is a 350 watt mercury lamp and currently set in constant power mode. And the manual explains the operation of this power supply. When the shutter is open, we can see the intensity rating of the UV energy. Uh, at the sample surface, uh, CI1 corresponds to 365 nanometer and CI2 corresponds to 405 nanometer. There's a dual detector inside the system so that when the, when the shutter is open, I'm able to see the reading. Uh, this at this moment, the power is still controlled in constant power mode, and I could see the UV radiation energy there. Now, likewise, by pressing D a second time, we can see the energy level at 4 or 5 nanometer. So right now it is 4 or 5 nanometer energy and this is constant power mode. The, by pressing constant intensity one channel for a longer time, we can set the energy level. So the energy level can be uh, currently it is 26 
you can change it by pressing this up and down arrows and then we can set the constant intensity level by pressing the same button again now when the energy dosage amount of energy dosage is known for the exposure the constant intensity level a mode can be used the constant intensity mode uh, helps to expose the sample with known amount of UV energy dosage level. There are numeric controls here. Uh, the numeric box has a four bar compressed air going into there and a two bar uh, compressed air is going out to the chuck and also there is a nitrogen regulator and there is a vacuum gauge. The system can be operated in standard mode, uh, hard contact, uh, while both the mechanical pressure and the nitrogen pressure will push the sample against the mask. And in soft contact mode, only the mechanical energy, uh, mechanical force is used. And in HP mode, there is a vacuum generated between the sample and the mass. So when we press that, and press the vacuum chamber, we can read the vacuum here, which is adjustable by using this regulator here. I'm going to operate a cycle and demonstrate this. I'm loading a sample, lifting up the chuck, and then I'm operating it in high precision mode, and then press vacuum chamber. So I can adjust the vacuum layer. So the standard, the maximum vacuum level that is achievable is 0.7 bar and it can be for low contact vacuum level it can be even operated at 0.3 bar level. Now once the vacuum chamber is pressed and, and the system is uh, to align it when you separate the lever the vacuum chamber stops. So there is no vacuum, now it is, you can move the sample and then we can expose, uh, during exposure the vacuum is disabled. So the gasket here on the edge of this chuck helps to generate the vacuum. So for moving the microscope, there is a microscope manipulator. There are two buttons on this. By pressing them, there is a the bed, the pneumatic brake on the table will be released. And there is another knob here by, by loosening this and moving it, we can move the microscopes along the vertical axis. And then this is to align the microscopes uh, to the, with respect to the location of the alignment marks. And the, these knobs will move the positioning of the objectives on the sample or on the mat. And by rotating this knob about a quarter turn, or less than a quarter turn, we can even fine focus the image. There's a knob on the microscope tower, which is to be used for coarse focusing. There's a CCD camera here, which requires 12 volt DC power supply. And the camera image is available on the monitor and also 
these eyepieces can be used to view the image. A couple of a pair of 5x objectives and 10x objectives will be included with the system. And this split field microscope generates two images, one from each objective, both left hand side and right hand side. There's a fiber optic illuminator, and this, by adjusting the intensity of the light source and the contrast and brightness on the video monitor, proper images of the pattern can be focused and alignment, best alignment could be achieved. I'm using a 365 nanometer UV energy meter and right now the energy level is about 27 milliwatt per centimeter square. So at the UV level can be calibrated using the external meter by by adjusting these parts here right below the right below the button Now this is the energy level in 405 nanometers. I'm going to measure the value using the 405 meter. These meters will not be included with the machine. These are for our in-house testing only. So at 405 nanometers, the energy level is very low because it is passing through a filter which is rated for 365 nanometers. Without the filter, you can see there is a very high amount of UV energy because it is a combination of all the wavelengths, peaks coming out of the mercury vapor line. to replace a lamp in the call source MJ B3 mask liner. First disconnect the nitrogen purge line which is attached from the flow meter to the housing. And then disconnect the fiber optic line and the power supply to the camera. So unscrew this long threaded bolt here and tilt the lamp housing. But sometimes it will be necessary to cut these tie wraps. Now once the housing is tilted, you can access the lamp from the opening here. The lamp is to be installed with an or down position. And there's an ellipsoid reflector in which the lamp electrode exists. Uh, this is Ushio 350 DS lamp. It has metric M4 threads on either ends. The, in order to handle the lamp, always use powder-free gloves and always make sure the lamp is sufficiently cold before accessing it. 
running the lamp in constant intensity mode over extended period of times could result in UV energy uh, levels decreasing. So verify the lamp intensity periodically in constant power mode and always go by the manufacturer's uh, lifetime limits of the UV lamp. Running a UV lamp after its life is over, ex expired could result uh, in critically lower UV energy levels and also catastrophic conditions such as lamp explosion. The, the lamp tower forward and backward movement speed can be regulated using these knobs 8 and 7 and 8 is for backward movement and 7 is for forward movement. Always make sure the compressed air pressure is 4 bar and run the system first to check the speed of the forward motion and adjust these knobs slowly to in such a way that the motion is, uh, is smooth and without any uh, breaks in the middle.